I'm Deborah Holton and this is Men and Women in Ministry and today I have a special guest and her name is Kimberly Jones and I am so excited that she is with us today. She has an amazing story to tell you. Kimberly has been with Teen Challenge as an employee for about 18 months and Kimberly tell us before you were an employee of Teen Challenge you actually came through the Teen Challenge program. Yes. And I just want you to kind of open up and share with our audience today how you ended up finding yourself in the Teen Challenge program. Then you can start at the beginning of your story. Okay. Well, um, my parents got married at a really young age and had children and we kind of um, grew up in a very rocky environment with them trying to figure out their identity. So there was a lot of back and forth, back and forth. They got divorced, a lot of bickering and arguing, so a lot of confusion happening. And um, I take a lot of blame for myself. And uh, I lost a brother at a young age when um, he was 15, so I was like nine years old. So that caused my family to go. Mm, be um, yeah, that would be tough. It caused them to go. Um, instead of pulling together, they all just separated and they got mad and blaming each other um, and fault finding. It's very negative environment. You know, I have heard not to interrupt you, but I have heard that it's like 80 percent of couples who lose a child end up in divorce. That is just how high the statistics are. That is how hard it is if you lose a child. So in their defense, I'm just letting you know that is the statistics of that. Now go right ahead. I'm sorry. They actually got divorced before we lost our brother. Okay. So they were already separated and we okay. were staying with our dad. Um, it just was hard. Five kids and still young in life and trying to go to church and um, live a good life. You know, they tried their best, but they still struggled with the world and um, pools inside of themselves. My dad struggled with alcohol um, and drugs and my mom, she just got she was easily depressed so she would she overdosed one time and oh, wow. would abandon us and tr run away because you know it's hard to raise kids when you still have such brokenness inside of you in the way that they grew up my dad never knew his dad so um, he just had Wait, some that's you know, always tough I think how how our environment when we grow up mm -hmm. has a lot to do with then how we process upbringing of our children. So then how did you get, how did Teen Challenge come into the picture? You're struggling, you're hurting, mm -hmm. um, and uh, how, how far down did you go? How did you struggle? How deep was your struggle? Well, my dad passed away, or my dad, my brother passed away. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, he just went down in his drinking and got abusive and violent. And we would try to open up and share, but he would get violent and he would make the comment, whatever happens in the house stays in the house. So we became very fearful, um, very fear-based on just his discipline and keeping things quiet. And even though things would hurt us, we couldn't feel like we could talk about him. So we went to school and my sister opened up and shared with a counselor what was happening in the home. So oh, okay. when she did that, they pulled me in for confirmation just to um, confirm that this was true and this is what was happening. So once they knew that, um, we, we never went home again. We got put in the system. Um, my mom, prior, before we got put with our dad, ended up abandoning us um, for um, a husband, left us with her family, so we got taken off of her, and that's how we got placed with our dad. So my brother passed away, we ended up in foster family. So here we are now um, with no family. My mom, we got taken off from our mom. We can't be with our dad anymore because he got charges put against him. And so we can't see him until we're 18 and I'm nine years old, you know, so I don't understand like, yeah, my dad hurt us, but I, I didn't understand the repercussions of everything that was happening. I just, you know, you're a child, you can't mm -hmm. grasp that, you know, uh, mentally. True. So that was, true. you know, traumatizing to me. So, and I remember trying to call my dad and he would say, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you. And that just broke my heart because I didn't understand. So I became very rebellious, you know, confused, um, uh, very, uh, you know, just a rambunctious child. Just I wouldn't listen. I became very hyper. I got diagnosed with ADHD, ADD, um, borderline bipolar, and I've been to the psych ward. You know, in hospitals, I would cut myself and hurt myself as a way of expression, trying to let out this pain that I couldn't feel like I could talk about. And um, so my mom ended up getting us back through court, and she didn't know what to do with us. You know, because she was trying to get her life together with her husband, and they're going to church and. 
uh, slowly she stopped going to church and you know she's giving us an option to go to church and of course we're like we don't want to go you know and you give a child that option you know they're they're going to choose not to you that know? is so true you know the scriptures say to train up a child in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart from it as a teen, sometimes they'll struggle, but they will remember when they're old. But if you leave them a choice and just leave the training up to them, the results just don't turn out yeah. quite as good. Yes. And it's funny that you say that, going off a little bit. Um, yesterday I went to a meeting and I was observing these kids. Um, all the adults were in one room and all the kids were out in the other room. And I was just watching them and how the parents were getting frustrated, the kids telling them to be quiet. But you, you, you're not out there with them and you're expecting them to to train themselves pretty much, but kids are just going to be kids unless you're beside true. them, tr teaching them true. and training them, you know. It takes and a lot of training. Yeah. <laughs> kids you take have to be a lot next, of training. Because mentally they don't know, you well, know. Well, and it's all about the relationship, yeah. isn't it? It's all about the relationship. God is a relational God and he developed the whole system of mothering and fathering and the family system because he is a relational God. He wants a, a relationship built. And so those children rely on that relationship. They look to the source. They're looking to you for training. They're looking to you to set that environment for them and they want interaction. It's yes. all about the interaction. You know, somebody said something to me once, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. And children are definitely that way. Even adults. You know, so you probably, up. with everything you've been through, mm -hmm had a real hard time believing that they cared right or believing that anybody cared right maybe yeah. but go ahead and, and pick back up there so my mom um fought for us back and when she did like i said she didn't know what to do with us um so she found out about teen challenge through our counselors because it was court ordered to see a counselor from the trauma that we encountered okay. just to kind of healing but it didn't do much for me because you know they would try to pry things out and I would just get angry and you know um, I didn't really understand why I had to talk to a complete stranger so I would just shut down I'd be very you know just rebellious and ornery and um, so my mom ended up hearing about Teen Challenge so they looked into it and then we end up going and being a part of that and I never really started much into my downfall going into rehab. I would hang out with neighbors who were involved in a band and they'd smoke marijuana and they would drink, but that's really all that it would go. I was still, I mean, pretty innocent for, for my standard, but actually going into rehab, it actually opened me up to way more with the other girls that were in there and feeling like I had to be, you know, um, worse, you know, in a sense to be better because um, if I didn't go through a lot, if I didn't do a lot, then, you know. Um, you know, I think sometimes. Kind of a competitive thing. Yes, you know? I think sometimes people think you have to have a horrible testimony to really then turn around and have an amazing turnaround. Right. You know, and um, so any, so then when you came into the Teen Challenge program, what is it that Teen Challenge does for kids? You're, you're hurting and you're now surrounded around other girls who are hurting. Yeah. What is it that Teen Challenge did for you that caused you your life to turn? Well, for me, I didn't quite get it until I got out, but God used it as an opportunity to sow seeds in my life because I was still gravitated toward those hurting because I was still hurting. You tend to gravitate toward, you know, what you're like. So because I was hurting and um, angry, I would gravitate toward those who were hurting and angry. In return, we just hurt each other. So I did, people would sow seeds in my life and love me, but I couldn't grasp love because I'd never really experienced love and I didn't understand what love was was you know and it was temporary and I would put it on the standards of man and you know the the people who were hurting around me if they couldn't love me then I blamed everybody else and God and so I really wanted nothing to do with God me and my mom argued all the time and that was the only relationship with God that was ever portrayed for me so I was like if that's what relationship with God looks like I don't want it you know um, and so did you graduate then from um, that program? I was in Decatur, Illinois Teen Challenge for a little bit over a year and then I transferred um, over to Indiana, Indianapolis where me and my sister could be together and kind of reconcile a little bit and grow together. By that point, she's already growing and maturing in the Lord and doesn't quite understand me because I st it hasn't clicked. It mm -hmm. hasn't, I didn't have that encounter yet. I remember like feeling the presence of God and like, you know, just goosebumps and chills all over me, but I didn't, I didn't understand yet. Um, and 
so they're like, it's time for you to go um, and be with your family. Um, you're not quite going anywhere. And I didn't quite understand. I just wanted to get out. Um, so I got out and I stayed with my mom for a little while. And I was 16 turning 17 when I got out. When I turned 17, I told my mom that I was gonna go stay with a friend um, for the summer. Um, I ended up not returning. And it was actually with a female and we were in a relationship. And so my life just went down and down and um, their, their parents didn't agree with our relationship. But once I was down there, you know, I mean, they just had to put up with us. And so they began to um, pay for everything. They got us a house and a car and everything that we needed. Um, wow. Yes, and so I felt like I was living the life and I was very, I was insecure, but I was prideful, yet I had no identity. I didn't know who I was and I was trying to use the world to build my identity. Um, so I, I started partying a lot and having people over and, you know, everybody seemed to like us and, you know, seemed to have all the tension. And then it, it, there turned a shift and it began to consume me and control me instead of me controlling um, my environment. And then my life just went downhill. I couldn't stop drinking. I always wanted something to do. I always wanted to be busy. I always wanted to be out. And you know, um, and there was an opportunity for the first time that I got to go stay with my grandma since I was nine years old. Um, and you know, I'm 18 at this time. And so I go and visit her, my dad's side, my dad's mom. And I haven't been in contact with them, you know, for years. So I had an opportunity to go and spend time with them. And when I did, she shared the gospel with me. She shared with me, you know, on the level of, if you die today, do you know where you'd go? And it just shook something inside of me and almost like this fear, but like this something in my identity happened. And I, after that, I went down farther because everything I built my life on was on sinking sand. And at that point, when I heard that, something inside of me shift and it's like everything just caved in and just engulfed and, um, and I just got really, I, I was working in the clubs and hanging out with gangs and I was really bad on ecstasy and I was hanging out with um, uh, drug dealers and doing crack cocaine and um, cocaine. And, uh, so and I was- thought it couldn't get any worse, it got worse. Yes. Boy, isn't that the way life can go when yeah. we're on the downward spiral? You think it can't get any worse, sometimes it can get worse when we right. don't have that foundation of Christ. So then when you get, the, how did you get to the foundation? Then tell me the good stuff God's done. Well, I ended up getting uh, put in jail. Um, I got a felony. And so at that point I had 31 days and I feel like it was God's grace over my life because for 31 days he pulled me away from the world to where I truly had to face myself. And I remember the book cart coming in and the, the one thing that stuck out to me out of all the books on the shelf was a Bible. I didn't even really read it. I, I tried to read in Genesis. I really didn't understand it, but it just, it was drawn, I was drawn to it. You know, so I just sat it on my, my stand and it would just be there and I would just look at it. And I really didn't even know why or what was happening. So um, I ended up getting out and going back home to my mom again and trying to um, pay my fines and I'm trying to work and my family doesn't really understand me. Nobody wants to hear me. My mom would say that, you know, um, I don't want to hear uh, those things that my baby girls had to go through. So she would just kind of shut me out, but I would project a lot of pain and hurt and she would take it personal like it was her, but it wasn't. I was just hurting from everything that I experienced and I wanted someone to talk to, someone to tell. And um, so my mom ended up kicking me out at one point because she didn't know what else to do. And um, at that point, I'm on the street and I'm sitting on the steps of a library and, you know, it's late. You know, I'm scared. I, I've been scared from the beginning. And I remember a uh, side comment a little bit. I remember walking back and forth places like to work. And it's funny because I have a felony and it's a felony for burglary and theft. But I was in a past relationship. It wasn't like I was going around stealing stuff. But um, I, I was just angry and I went to this person's house and, you know, um, just took back what I thought was mine and reality and from someone you'd been involved with yes and so God provided for me even then in his great grace and I had a job as a cashier at a restaurant so wow. late That's jobs unheard of after I know yeah, that on your from the beginning he's just taking care of me in in ways that you know that that seem impossible to the world standard yet for him anything's possible and, and that's what I love about him. But I remember walking and I would, I would have my hood up, you know, because I'd, I'd been raped. So I was, lived in this fear, like someone's gonna take advantage of me. I feel vulnerable, you know, and no confidence, no boldness, just terror, fear, just feeding into my head. 
And so I would say the scripture from Teen Challenge that just got ingrained in me because you had to memorize scripture and you were in the word, but you know, even though I didn't get a whole lot, there were still some seeds that were sown on some kind of good soil at that point that God at that moment began to sprout up. Isn't and it beautiful how the word says that my word will not return void, talking mm -hmm. about God's word. And <clears throat> even if we don't understand all of it, if that word is in there, the Holy Spirit can pull in there and expound on that word and use it and turn a heart. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. So go ahead. So my verse was, I do not have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I would just say those words, and I didn't know what they meant. I just would say it. Like it would just be like, and I, I still didn't have peace. I didn't feel anything Now I was saying the verse, you know, but that would just be the verse that I would say. And, you know, I, I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't know that you could have a relationship with him. I didn't even know that you could know him. So back to when my mom kicked me out, I'm sitting on the steps of the library and I look up at the sky and I said, God, if you're real, like, take this from me. Like, I don't want this anymore. I just, I had this deep call, like, pull in, in the inside of me somewhere telling me that there was something more. There was something more to life than what I was seeing and what I was raised in. And, um, and so I was like, God, if you're real, take this from me. Like, if this is all life has to offer, I don't want it anymore. And so at that point, um, my dad, who I didn't see since I was nine years old and got taken off, was the only one willing to take me in. And that's kind of a big deal because I, I didn't have a father in my life, you know, my teenage years, growing up, you know, going through, you know, those phases in life and, you know, just having that gap in my life. And my dad's always meant the world to me. Yet he was hard and he was hurt, but um, he, he did his best, you know, that he knew how. And so I stayed with him and he asked for forgiveness for me. And, and at that point, the greatest act of love, the first um, grasp of love I ever experienced is, it sounds silly, but he flushes marijuana down the toilet for me. And for me, that was a big deal for me, for my mentality, what I knew in the world, that, that you would do that for me, you would sacrifice that for me, because that's all that I knew, you know, was that lifestyle. And so when he did that for me, just something in my heart just opened up. So when he bought me a bus ticket back to Illinois, after staying him, with him for two weeks, I stayed with a Christian family, and my life was wrecked for God. I would lock myself in a room and just turn on worship music and read the Bible, and I was never the same. So since you got that relationship with the Lord started, where have you come to now? What are some of the things that God has done on this solid foundation? You finally really comprehended that the love of God was there for you in, in the salvation experience. You accepted Christ into your heart and into your life, invited him, welcomed him, and he began to turn the shift and make your life better. And where have, what's the journey been like since then? Oh my goodness. Like when I first started out, it just, I had an encounter. Like I felt him in my life. I, I got a lady at church prophesied over me and just, you know, it, at the beginning, it was just holding on, knowing that I experienced something new and something so real that I wasn't letting it go, you know, and and really at that beginning point, when you come out of that lifestyle, there's so many things that pull at you, temptation, struggles, you know, the sex, the drugs, the alcohol, the friends pulling at you, to, drawing you towards that lifestyle like a magnet and trying so hard to resist that pull and stay out of that because you know where that's going to lead and, and you don't want that lifestyle anymore. That's why I cried out in the first place because I knew that there was something more. So when I encountered him and I seen these beautiful people around me, I was like, I, I have to, to fight that pull. So that's when I just started, you know, really just being sensitive, like seeking in his word. And, you know, at first I didn't even understand the word. And when someone told me, you know, start in Proverbs, you know, it, it teaches you wisdom and to discern between right and wrong, which at that point I had no filter. You know, I'd been so desensitized by the world. I didn't know what was right and what was not. So I, it was advised to me to start in Proverbs and start in Psalms because that teaches you how to pray, how to talk to God, because I didn't know what to say. I didn't even know what I was feeling. So it helped me tapped into that, that reality rawness of my emotions, what was really happening when I didn't know what was going on. And when I did that, like, I couldn't stop reading the Bible. You know, I was just lost in the Word, and that's all that I would do is just just feed on on this food. And and I just, I was hungry. I was so deprived spiritually and, and physically and emotionally and just every aspect of my life. Kind of sounds like that song. There's a song on the Christian radio right now. Um, that says, I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed yes. by you, referring to Jesus. And it's, it's, that's what I kept hearing when you were saying, I just was consumed and 
and, and overwhelmed, you know, by his love because it is it is the most amazing love yeah. that anyone could ever find. And really, once so, you taste that, that's that's what got my life to where it's at now. Just holding on, not letting go, and you know, taking the warning from the Bible. I have have had people tell me you take the Bible too seriously, you know, and I'm like, how could you not? Once you come from something so drastic and you taste something so good, you know. I mean, I'm, I was ruined, you well, know, by the love of God and, you know, just... Forever life-changing. Yes. It is forever life-changing. Well, the reason uh, that I was so impressed and wanted you to come and, and share your story was because of the gentleness and the kindness that I have seen. I've seen you uh, in operation uh, at Teen Challenge with the girls. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've seen how you operate and there is just such a meekness. Meekness is power under control. There is such a gentleness and such a meekness and a genuine concern and care for the other um, people that are in the program. And I just want to commend you for that because it's just so evident that the love of Christ is operating. So what all kinds of things um, have, have you seen in the girls' lives that you're able to minister to there? What kinds of things are you seeing in their lives? How are their lives changing? Now? Oh my goodness, they blow me away every single day. Like me just letting God have his way in my life as I'm doing life with them and just being what he's called me to be, they automatically shift and change just watching me, you know? So it's just being there as someone solid, someone, you know, of change, you know, and, and understanding what they've been through and to challenge them in that, and being able to speak in their lives because everything that I've been through that I get to in return <coughs> pour into them and give them hope and encourage them because I know what it's like to be so helpless, to think that change mm -hmm. isn't possible, that, that what you've raised and that's all that you know and, and that's all there is in life, but in reality, there's so much more in the world and there's a whole world out there to be seen and to be experienced it's exciting and it's a journey and we get so caught up in in the hurt and the pain and the misery of life we forget you know that there's such hope out there so I love to deposit hope in them and as I do that you know and I just watch God just take over in their lives and just just be that solid rock to show them that God is real and you really can have a relationship with him and he does love you and he does have a purpose and a plan for you and and once you encounter that like it's it's ruined for them and and mm -hmm. they just are wrecked by the love that that genuinely God has for them because people typically don't hear that you know they don't they don't get that out in the world and in church so people get wounded a lot in the church cuz wounded people are coming in and, and and some people in the church are so wounded so they don't understand and so they hold that to a standard and then they walk away from the church and you know and that is so true so having you this know, opportunity is wounded people hurt people i always tell people hurt people hurt people they, they hurt people because they still have wounds. And unfortunately, you see a lot of that in the world and in the church because they're not perfect. They've just come in and they've found Christ and some of them are still trying to walk through and walk out of their issues, you know. Um, one of the things that I think is, there was this little story that somebody shared once about they had a piranha in a, in a tank and um, they put fish in and the piranha would devour the other fish and that's what they would eat. Well then they put a glass divider in the tank and every time the piranha would go to try to eat the fish the glass would be there and they would hit it and so you know they did that for like three months or something the glass was there. After about three months they took the glass out of the tank and the piranha would never go after anything on that half of the tank. It would never again go after those fish because they had just been conditioned. And I think, don't you think that's what happens to young people? There's a lot of young people out there and they've opened up their heart to their parents seeking, you know, over and over and over and to teachers and to other people. And they've just, they've hit that brick wall. They've hit that glass so many times that yes. they just, they give up and I think the hope is the thing you know when you lose your hope you know there's just no more hope when you when your hope is gone there is no hope right but you know the Bible talks about how Christ makes us a prisoner of hope right. and he he is hope when there is no hope yes. and that's the beautiful thing about Teen Challenge 
is they are pointing kids to Christ. And I believe even the Holy Spirit, somebody sitting right in their living room, the Holy Spirit can yeah. just fall during a program like this, or if they just go get a Bible. If you just go get a Bible and you pray and ask God to show himself to you, and then open that Bible to the Psalms or to the Proverbs, he can reveal himself to you and that spirit will make him real to you in a way that you've never known. And hope right. can be rekindled like that. Hope right. can be reborn. You know, I, I uh, often, often tell people that without a death, you can't have a resurrection. And sometimes there has to be a complete and total death right. of the old life right. before people are willing to accept right. a new thing, a new life. And uh, so is that, was that your experience? You had to finally come to the end of your Yes. Life? My mom would actually tell me, when she kicked me out of the house, she would tell me, you still need to hit your rock bottom. You still need to hit your rock bottom. And for me, that was my rock bottom. She kept telling me, you need to hit your rock bottom, but little did she know she was prophesying really into my life yeah. for what was to come sooner than what we even realized. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, I just, I gave up on my own. I, I was done fighting on my own. I mean, I could not do it. I tried this whole time on my own and I realized I, I can't do anything on my own. You know? That is so true. I think, you know, that's the key to everyone who is able to turn their life around and give it to Christ is when we get to the point where we've done everything we know to do. Yeah. We have done everything we, we possibly know to do to medicate or to fix this problem. And um, once we've tried everything to fix this problem yeah. and we have come to no avail, completely no avail, then we are able to look up and then we are able to finally open up to the option that maybe God is real. Maybe this plan of salvation could work. Maybe Jesus Christ did love me enough that he did something because nobody else is. Yeah. So look at the camera and say whatever it is you would like to say to the one who's feeling kind of hopeless today. I would just like to say that as you're going through life, we all have things in us that we desire and we want, and we feel like there's places missing inside of us. So we try to get other things to fill um, a person. I'm, I'm lonely, I'm single, I just want to be loved. So we find things in this world another person try to fill us. But little do we know that they are just as much as need as we are. So they fail us and we fail them and they can never fill, fill that for us because there was only one meant to fill that for us and until we realize that that our things that we feel like we're lacking can't come from this world but from the creator of this world then we become filled and satisfied and you know I would just challenge you to instead of allowing the world to fill you um, the media the what the world says about what normalcy is because you are normal just the way that you are way God created you and you can have mm -hmm. peace in that that you know who dictates normalcy you know that that you can be free to be you with every um, uniqueness of what people can't relate or understand to but to know that you have something to offer this world and God wants to use that and come and invade those spaces and and truly fill you and satisfy you um, on the areas that you feel like you're lacking and you can't get met your husband your kids your family all the things that you thought were gonna fill you and satisfy you once you obtained it and you realize that that it hasn't that um, he was the one um, in the beginning created to fill those places and once you give him that space um, and allow him to invade it then then you can have freedom to actually enjoy those things instead of depending on those things and let those things bless you instead of um, um, yes. instead of what we get yes. on our own right <laughs> yeah. well um, maybe you're out there today and you've never started your journey with Jesus Christ and maybe you don't feel your Heavenly Father is really made himself real to you. But I believe today is your day. And so no matter what the situation is, no matter what uh, circumstances you find in your life, you're a candidate to accept Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you he is the real deal. I have had this wonderful experience with him since I was 17 and it has been the most exciting journey mm -hmm. you will ever go on. I tell people it's like going to 
uh, an amusement park. There's, it's exhilarating, it's exciting, and like a roller coaster. There's times when I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's always, always worked out that he's revealed himself to be, make it a wonderful experience in the end, no matter what I've went through. And it's the most exciting journey you will ever, ever go on. And it can start right now. So I want you to pray with me today. Dear Jesus, I just love you and I want, to, I want you to come into my life and I'm just gonna surrender. I don't even know you enough to love you yet, completely yet, but I love the idea that somebody cares for me. So I am just gonna lay down my life and trying to control my own life. And I'm gonna lay that at your feet. I surrender it now. I surrender everything to you all the good things in my life, but all the messes, all the messes. I just give you all the messes in my life. And I'm asking you, Jesus Christ, to come into my heart and come into my life. I surrender everything to you. And I want this life. I want this journey. I want to know that somebody's there walking it with me. And I want to share heaven with you, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father for sending your son and that I can be born again. Mm -hmm. And I accept it right now at this moment. Amen. Amen.